Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie. This video module is going to be concerned with the incentive effects of poverty relief programs. Economists generally agree with one proposition, that is that incentives matter. Uh, incentives matter to workers. Uh, you pay them more, they should be, able, should be expected to work more. You tie pay uh, to performance and um, you should get a higher level of performance. You tie executive pay to, uh, to stock prices and, and executives can be expected to respond uh, by allocating resources more efficiently, uh, hiking the firm's profitability and hiking uh, the firm's uh, stock uh, prices. Incentives matter in, 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 uh, in taxes. Uh, you raise uh, the tax rate and uh, the result can be that uh, people do not get, earn, do not take as much from uh, working harder and, and, and longer. Uh, as a consequence, higher tax rates can discourage uh, people from uh, working. Uh, the same can be said of poor people. Uh, that is, if you uh, reduce the take that uh, poor people get after uh, taxes, uh, then they should have less incentive to work harder uh, and longer. Uh, the problem with many uh, uh, poverty relief programs is that they tie uh, benefits uh, to the earned income of low-income workers. Consequently, when income goes up, uh, the benefits uh, go down. Uh, that means that the spendable income of low-income uh, workers or low-income people uh, does not rise by as much as their earned income. Income may go up by, their earned income may go up by $100, but because their benefits go down by $30 or, or $40, uh, their spendable income only goes up by uh, $70 to uh, $60. We say in those, those cases that uh, the poor have borne uh, an implicit a tax rate. Something has been taken away from it, from them, uh, benefits, uh, just as uh, taxes are taken away from higher income people. We can explain this um, phenomenon uh, more carefully with resort to a graph uh, that does not uh, take on the shapes of the supply and demand curves that we've been uh, using in, in past uh, videos. In this graph we have earned income on the horizontal axis, spendable income on the uh, vertical axis. We have a line going out of the uh, origin uh, at 45 degrees. What this means is that any point uh, on this uh, curve is equal distance from each axis. So an income level of, of E1 will result in a spendable income level of S1. Along this uh, uh, 45 degree uh, curve, uh, the tax rate, the implicit or explicit tax rate is going to be uh, zero. And the reason is that these two sides of the triangle are going to be equal, which means that the spendable income of, of the worker goes up by the exact same amount as the uh, earned income. Now we can decide to uh, help uh, workers by simply saying that anyone who earns less than $5,000 a year uh, will get um, uh, 6000 uh, dollars. Well, if that's the case, then uh, there's a strong disincentive for, for low-income workers to work because if someone is earning uh, $5,000, then they can reduce their income to something below uh, $5,000, even all the way to zero. If they go to zero earned income, they will get $6,000 in government benefits. If, in fact, they earn $2,500, uh, they will get the $2,500 plus $6,000 in benefits or $8,500. Uh, dollars. Indeed, what uh, would be the case is that anybody who earns $5,500 uh, should be expected to lower uh, their earned income to $4,999, and in doing so, they will get a total spendable income of, um, of, uh, of $10,999. And so you should expect anybody up to um, uh, uh, 11,000, well, any, anyone up to $6,000 should be expected to lower their income below uh, 5,000. Well, that won't, that's, um, that's a problem. You don't want to discourage people or, from working. You don't want to encourage them to uh, reduce their work. Well, we could say that uh, no matter what your income is, you'll get uh, $6,000 in income. Well, if you do that, uh, then the problem there is that uh, uh, Low-income people will get additional 6000 but uh, so will Bill Gates uh, get the additional 6000 uh, The welfare budget will be enormous. 
Now, what is typically done is that uh, at very low income, say zero, uh, workers will get some income, some benefits, say uh, $6,000 uh, if they earn zero income. But as the income uh, goes up, the earned income goes up, um, the benefits are, are tapered off. And as a consequence, uh, there may be some break-even income, uh, for example, uh, E2, where benefits uh, go to zero. At that point, at the break-even income of E2, the spendable income of the workers is exactly equal to uh, E2. The problem here is that there is a tremendous tax rate uh, embodied in this kind of uh, benefit arrangement. That is, a person earns this much more in income, A uh, to B in income, but the person's uh, spendable income only goes up from B uh, to uh, C. And my take on, on this, it, uh, CD uh, looks to be about one-third of A, uh, B. Uh, that means that the person suffers a reduction in uh, benefits equal to two-thirds the increase in earned income. Uh, that means they suffer an implicit tax rate of 66, 67 uh, percent. Well, uh, that can discourage workers uh, from earning uh, more income. Now, the problem in, in trying to overcome the disincentive effects is that uh, you, you have one or two choices. You can lower the amount of income going to really poor people, that is, people receiving uh, zero income, to something like S, S1. Well, if that is the case, uh, you can taper it off such that the break-even income remains uh, the same. We'll call that uh, position X. In doing that, uh, you can see that the increase in spendable income goes up uh, by more with any given increase in earned income. The tax rate uh, goes down. You give poor, low income people um, more incentive to earn a more income. The problem is uh, that you're also taking away uh, benefits to a lo lot of low income people. So in order to um, uh, increase the incentives that, that low income people have to, to work more, uh, you have to take away uh, benefits uh, from them. Well, there's an another alternative. Uh, you can, in fact, uh, uh, keep the old uh, benefits at zero income and just increase the break-even income. And if you increase the break-even income to uh, E3, uh, the result is that you can have the same impact uh, as as just immediately before. That is, you increase the take that um, consumers have after earning more income. You reduce the tax rate. The problem is that this means that you will be providing income to people who may no longer uh, be uh, poor. In fact, the uh, uh, the more you the more you try to reduce the disincentive effects of the uh, welfare programs, the more and more uh, non-poor people you bring into the uh, into becoming recipients of, of welfare. You also tend uh, to increase uh, the welfare budget. So there's a real problem here uh, in trying to help the poor. Uh, trying to reduce their uh, incentives means that you've either got to cut the benefits going uh, to the poor or you end up uh, increasing the benefits going to the poor, uh, but also increasing the benefits uh, going to the rich, or let's put it, the not-so-poor uh, Americans.